Developing now, Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett and Foreign Minister Yair Lapid have agreed to dissolve the country's parliament. Yeah, this move will prompt the country's fifth election in just three years' time. Bennett and Lapid formed a coalition after a two-year political stalemate, which then ousted former Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. It's an eight-faction alliance. Uh, it was able to pass a new state budget for the first time in three years, but it clashed over a whole bunch of other issues, uh, making it difficult to govern. And then two of these coalition leaders defected, giving the opposition party, the Likud party, a majority in parliament, which prompted what we're talking about today, the dissolution. Uh, and as previously agreed to, before this next election, which is expected sometime in the fall, Lapid will take over as interim kind of caretaker prime minister that is again until that election happens. Now, former U.S. ambassador to Iraq and Turkey, James Jeffrey, joins us. He's currently the Wilson Center chair of the Middle East program and Slater Family Distinguished Fellow. Ambassador Jeffrey, thanks so much for being with us. So, you know, as we know, members of governments around the world disagree all the time, including uh, right here in ours, uh, where the Senate, you know, is split so evenly between two sides and don't seem to be able to get anything done. So why is what's happening in Israel forcing the parliament to dissolve and for the government to have a new election? Uh, first of all, thank you for having me on. The government could not go on indefinitely with less than a 60 or 61 seat majority, and it fell below that uh, several times, and it is now clear that it will not be able to have a majority, so sooner or later, it would not be able to pass budgets and other laws. Thus, uh, the two leaders, uh, Neftali Bennett and Yair Lapid, decided that this is the right time to go back to the people. Uh, probably the elections will take place before the end of October. Uh, and see if they can get a larger majority. It's been a very successful one-year term under the uh, uh, circumstances of the Israeli uh, government, and it has done very well in foreign policy, pushing back hard against Iran, both in Syria and in Iran itself, and working with both the Biden administration and Arab states to further develop uh, what began with the Abraham Accords, this informal alliance between the Arab world, even Turkey and Israel. Uh, but, Ambassador, there have been numerous elections in recent years and what had been a period of uh, a supposed stability where Bennett was going to continue for another year and then Lapid was going to be there for two years. All that is now wiped away. Why would another election after what they've had three or four in the last uh, few years uh, get us any closer in that country to stability once again? Uh, that's a good question. I think you have to uh, differentiate between government stability. This is a hard concept for us in America with our four-year terms and such. Government stability and stability of overall economic, diplomatic, and towards the Palestinians' internal policies. Uh, I don't think there will be a major change. I've worked closely with the most likely alternative leader, uh, uh, Bibi Netanyahu, when I was in government uh, a few years ago, uh, he will continue very, very similar policies. There'll be some uh, differences in shading, but nothing major. And and so, Ambassador, what could all of this mean for Benjamin Netanyahu, if anything? You know, he is still the leader of the opposition party. And he is still indicted on three charges of corruption, bribery and it, breach of trust. Exactly, so it's no exactly, small thing. Exactly. Right. It, absolutely right. He's facing criminal charges. Uh, but he also, you know, could be sort of a nostalgic figure to some Israelis who are looking at the mess that they're currently facing and thinking, hey, you know, that was a lot easier, at least when there was one guy in charge. So what, what are his prospects? He's the leader of the opposition. Is he going to come back here? Uh, what does that mean for uh, the, uh, the partnership, the uh, allyship between the U.S. and Israel? Um, first of all, again, in terms of the critical question, the alliance, it will stay solid as it has under Bennett and did under Netanyahu. In terms of Netanyahu's chances, uh, his party, Likud, has uh, only 29 of the 120 seats in parliament. So while it's the largest uh, party in parliament, it really isn't very big. He would have to form an eclectic coalition similar to what Bennett has had to do. And that tends to push Israeli politics back into the center. Uh, I see no major change in either foreign policy or policy towards the uh, Palestinians for Netanyahu to come back. But as you mentioned, if he becomes prime minister again, I don't know the intricacies of Israeli law, but I think that uh, makes him immune from charges, at least uh, in court uh, sentencing, at least while he's in government. That would be an wow. interesting development for sure. <laughs> it would be. All right. Ambassador James Jeffrey, thank you so much for your insight into this region of the world. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having me on.